Hey guys, I'm Tom with Tech Chat, and this is my TV at the moment. It's the LG G1 77 inch OLED, and it is beautiful, but I know what you're thinking. It's too small. Look at all this extra space. Look at this wall I'm not using. Well, you're right. Let's try something different. Like this, perhaps. It's a 120 inch projector. This is actually an ultra short throw. It's an LG Cinebeam triple laser projector, 4K HDR and I've got this ALR screen I've mounted to the wall. And as you can see, there is literally no more room. It is a bit tasty. And obviously I'm a huge fan of TVs, the bigger the better. I love an OLED, which this is not obviously, but I was curious about switching to projectors. Could this give me a better gaming and movie experience? Well, yes, but I have some thoughts. I mean, just look at this, 77 inches up to 120 inches with this LG Cinememe HU915QE. This has a two and a half times larger screen area compared to my TV. I mean, it's just in a completely different league. This thing is three meters or almost 10 feet diagonally. It's the same as having four 60 inch TVs next to each other in terms of surface area which naturally makes it great for a bit of split screen Rocket League or maybe a bit of old fashioned time splitters. Now, obviously you can get high end projectors that you mount to your ceiling, you know, traditional ones, but having an ultra short throw or UST like this means it's only that much from the wall. So you can get the full 120 inch 4K image at just 18.3 centimeters or 7.2 inches from your wall. Narrow the gap to just 5.6 centimeters or just over two inches, barely enough room to fit your cables and you can still get a bloody great 90 inch image, which actually for some people may be enough. Now I've always been curious about switching to a high-end projector instead of a high-end TV, but I didn't want to have the fuss of mounting it like on the ceiling because I don't have a house big enough for a proper theater room. This is my spare bedroom, uh, which I've, well, done this to. But then along came UST projectors. They've been around for a few years, but they've been getting better and better, although they do still command a price premium over a regular projector. But you're of course saving a lot of money installation in super long HDMI cables and you can move it. You could take this outside, uh, you know, hang a sheet on your garden fence and have an outdoor cinema. Uh, you can change it between rooms. Maybe more importantly though, ultra short throws mean you can have a massive screen even in a small room. Although one thing I will say actually from experience because initially we set this up without a screen, hoping that my white wall would be good enough, but it's not really. And I'll come back to this later, but if you are gonna invest in a high end UST projector, or to be honest, any projector, you're gonna need a screen, any screen, although ideally one like this, an ALR screen. Color and contrast are great, mostly thanks to how bright this gets. We're looking at about 3,700 peak lumens from the triple laser setup, which is equivalent to a TV with around 11 to 1200 nits of peak brightness, which is actually beyond what my OLED TV can do. So the size is pretty eye-watering, but so is the price. This projector, this specific model, and I'll leave a link below if you do want to check it out, will cost you about £6,000, and that's before you get a screen, which you should do. But this is the price you pay for the convenience of ultra short throw. Now this is the HU915QE, but there is also a QB model, which is actually even more expensive at about six and a half grand. And that gets slightly better image quality thanks to above 100% DCI P3 color gamut coverage and even greater contrast, despite actually having a lower peak brightness of 3000 lumens. However, if your name is not Mr. Moneybags and six grand is still a lot or a bit of a stretch, then LG's mid-range Cinebeam HU715Q is more affordable at four grand. It's still 120 inches and 4K, but it's not as bright and it only uses a single laser. Now this projector is a review sample sent by LG. This is not a sponsor video uh, and they will probably ask for this back any day now, but I didn't wanna test this, this high-end projector without a screen. So I actually bought this myself, it was like 1500 quid. These high-end ALR screens, which I think are the best of the best, are quite pricey. But I wanted to give this the best shot possible and see really how a high-end projector system would compare to my pretty high-end TV setup. But having seen the difference between projecting this onto my white wall, it was not the kind of experience I expected given the price and the quality of this projector. 
I can't stress this enough. The projector surface, in my mind, is just as important as the projector itself. You don't even need to spend a fortune to get one like this. Any kind of screen or even uh, a projector paint, if you apply it to your wall, will make a huge difference to the brightness and the contrast. Although ideally, a good ALR or ambient light reflecting screen like this is your best bet because these actually reflect the projector light from below to maximize luminance and contrast while absorbing light from above, bringing the total of this setup to 7,500 pounds. Yeah. Now my experience of projectors in the past are of horrible kind of grainy washed out images, a bit of a painful installation, no smart apps. They were just sort of dumb things you had to plug a, uh, an HDMI from your laptop out into. I appreciate I've not been around projectors a lot recently, but this is something completely different because uh, we have LG's WebOS software here. So it very much is like a TV and you can see it is also a little bit slow like some of the TVs, but you've got all the streaming apps, Netflix, Disney Plus, Apple TV, you've got AirPlay built in. And of course, with a remote like this, you've got all the usual controls of the screen options, audio. It's a TV, but you know, not. <laughs> and every time I sit down to play some games or watch some TV or a movie on this, it just feels like a proper movie theater experience that I just don't get from my TV. Everything feels more like an event. Although if you do sit too close, it might make you feel a bit dizzy. And to be honest, a round of full guys is just a sensory overload. Even the sound, the 40 watt 2.2 speaker setup is powerful and it can easily fill a large living room. And it lets you pair it with LG's Bluetooth speakers for surround sound. So you could rely on the inbuilt speakers, but to be honest, if you're gonna spend this kind of money, I would definitely pair it with an external soundbar or speaker setup. Let me just pan the camera around because you'll see this is a window and it is a beautifully sunny day, which we don't see very often here in the UK. And while it is obviously a bit more washed out, it's not as contrasty and uh, crisp as my TV. It's very good for a projector and actually you can use this even in daylight. But if you close your blinds or you're just watching this at night, this thing really comes alive with deep blacks and bright highlights. I would take this for watching movies over my TV. Sadly, it can't match my OLED's perfect black levels. It's closer to a high-end LED LCD TV than an OLED, but this is brighter and a whole lot bigger. Most UST projectors like this use a single laser light source, which is sometimes called a laser TV. And the benefit of lasers over traditional lamps is that they can get much brighter, they can produce more vivid colors, and they can last up to 20,000 hours. This guy uses three lasers, one each for RGB, which means high brightness, a more precise image, and greater color accuracy. And brightness is key because the higher it is, the better the contrast, the colors, the HDR. And while around 1500 peak lumens will get you by in a fully darkened room, if you add in any light, it will seriously degrade the image. So being able to hit 3700 peak lumens is obviously a big help. HDR is a bit of a mixed bag though. We do get HDR10, HLG, and HDIG for games, but no Dolby Vision, sadly. And again, actual HDR performance has a lot to do with your screen and the environment as well. In terms of fan noise, it is just about audible if you're close up, but it's quieter than almost any other projector I've used. And actually, if you've got any kind of sound on at all, then you just don't hear it. On the design side of things, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love the straight lines, the off-white color, and this Danish-designed wool speak cover. Although my dad, who helped set this up, wasn't a huge fan. He thought it just looked like something out of the 60s. But the simplicity and the all-in-one setup means that it's pretty much plug and play. You just pop it onto your TV stand. That's the wrong way around, but well done. Plug in any HDMI sources, and you can use the eARC HDMI for your sound system. Then just turn it on and complete the on-screen setup. And you can physically scale the image size from 90 to 120 inches just by moving it closer or further from your wall. Although keep in mind, the only height adjustment is via the adjustable feet. And with these set to the minimum at 120 inches, the image still extends right up to my ceiling, which is a bit annoying as it's higher than I wanted and you can't just tip it forward to counter the effect. But once you are happy with the size, you can make sure everything is straight and level by adjusting the feet. Although in my case, I just had to correct for distortion with the edge adjustment control, which lets you manually position the corners, the sides and the center points. Focusing is all automatic, although you can make corrections if you want via the wheel. And then it's just a case of selecting your preferred picture mode. You can balance the brightness, the color, and the contrast to your taste and also to your room, and that's about it. 
What about gaming though? Well, I mean, a 4K 120-inch screen is nothing to be sniffed at. It is an incredibly immersive experience, but there are a few downsides. For starters, this is only 60 hertz versus 120 on my OLED. It also misses out on VRR, although it does get ALLM, which automatically switches to game mode. But the main downside for me is the 50 millisecond response time, which just dulls the responsiveness. So TV, movies, and casual gaming, yes, absolutely. For more serious gaming, no. But overall, I have to say this has completely transformed what I imagine a projector experience to be like. It's not perfect, it's incredibly expensive, uh, but you just can't get a TV this big, or if you can, it's gonna probably cost you 50,000 pounds or something like that. Ultra short throw is just so much nicer. And also you're getting a lot of the extra smarts that you don't get with a lot of traditional projectors, including the WebOS uh, and all the smart apps and software updates, which is quite important. But I guess to answer the final question of, will I be fully switching to this from my OLED TV? No, I don't think so. I love this and it is a great theater experience but I think it's just gonna to be too big for a regular TV when you just wanna you know, turn the news on or just have something in the background. It's a bit overwhelming. Uh, also for gaming, gaming is quite important to me, so this doesn't really check enough boxes for that. And also, it's quite a lot more expensive. You can get the 77 inch, which I know is not the exact same thing as this, it's a lot smaller, but you can get my OLED TV for like four grand-ish, so like 50% less than this. And while you could argue, well, you know, when you haven't got your TV on, you've just got this big, black, horrible, uh, void on your wall, well, you kind of do as well when you have a high-end projector system because you need a screen. So you're not really gaining in that respect either. But what do you think? Would you go for a super high-end TV or a super high-end projector system? Have I convinced you? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this, then a like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.